out this morning to uh, have a look for a fox but um, I was out first light, had a little set out, didn't see anything so just one of those things. However I did bring with me the 22LR so I thought it'd be great fun to have a little play around with that today because it's lovely still conditions, only about a three or four mile an hour wind um, so I'm hoping that I can stretch the range out a little bit on that. Now I've got the Begara B14R with me, I've had this rifle for a good good year or so now and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed using it ever since. Now I've brought the FX Ballistic Chronograph with me, the True Ballistics Chronograph and I've got a couple of steel targets out, one about 200 metres, another one about 150 metres. I'm going to have a little play around with those, get some, um, get some information from the chronograph, see what the ammunition's doing and then hopefully be able to really fine tune the uh, the stuff that I'm using at the moment. I'm using the Winchester X subs, so I'm going to have a little play around with that and see if I can get them shooting really well. And then maybe we'll uh, go out and have a look for a, a rabbit or a pigeon or a crow or something and um, see if we can get a couple of long range shots with it. Right, well, the first thing you need to do when you're playing around with a 2 2 stretching the ranges is to make sure it is zeroed perfectly. So I've zeroed it at 50 metres and um, I've just checked it and I was actually shooting very slightly low there so I've just brought that up and uh, my final shot is a few little groups so I was just shooting at either bullet holes uh, little bits of mud and things like that whatever was on the board but um, my piece de resistance was uh, a fly which landed on the board at 50 metres and you can just see the remnants of it there so very happy with that so we count that as the first kill of the day Right, so we've got the rifle zeroed. The next thing we're going to do is have a look at the phone app that we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using the Element Ballistics app today. It's a nice straightforward app to use um, and it seems to be very accurate as well. So I've just pulled up the ammunition we're using on their bullet library here. We've got the Winchester Subsonic 42s. It's all listed in there, so all the information I need is already in there. So I've put uh, the information of the rifle in. I've also updated the weather and everything. You can do all that just by connecting to the internet and updating the app. So that's done. So next thing we're going to do is just have a shot at a target and just see uh, how far adrift we are and whether we need to adjust that at all. So the first target we've got is 110 metres away. So we put that into the app. 10 so that's telling me I need a correction of 9.31 MOA now the nearest to that would be 9.25 so I'm going to dial that in here as well because that's just starting to pick up a little bit. Right. Okay, so we've got a nice freshly painted target down there. 925 dialed in. Level the scope up a little bit. Right. So we've got a hit, we've got a little bit of wind drift on there of about uh, one MOA. So I'm just going to aim off a little bit on the next shot. So that's better. Okay, good. I'm happy with that. So, there's a couple of shots in the middle of the target there. Uh, and then one, the first shot I took, which was slightly, slightly off and a little bit lower than the others. But that's more than likely just down to a little bit of variation with the velocities and the ammunition. Okay, so, let's have a look at the next target. That is... So that's 
That is 2681, so 2675. So 2675. I'm not seeing an awful lot of wind down there, so I'm just going to go straight out that. So we've hit. Elevation's pretty good. Fractionally high, slightly right. So that's about... Down there, that's probably about... Just shy of an MOI, MOA, sorry, MOA to the right. So I'm just going to aim off a little bit for the next shot. And that's pretty much centre, still slightly right. Okay, good. So that's pretty good we're just getting a little bit of wind drift on there but nothing too serious so let's see if we can find something to uh, to hunt then and stretch the ranges out a little bit with this now as i've been filming this video i've noticed there's been a few pigeon have been dropping into the crop on the field just to the left of my target up there um, and there's also been one or two i've just spotted have been landing on the fence post out there as well so I think I'll, uh, I'm just going to sit here for a bit and uh, just see if I'll get an opportunity at, at one of them. Okay, here we go. We've got a rabbit just popped out of the cover there. He is at 165 metres. So let's put that into the app. 65 that gives me a correction of 20 and a half. Uh, where are we? Let's come back. Uh, so 20 and a half. Okay. Just gonna wait for that wind to die for a little bit. Lovely. One bunny down. Excellent, that was one rabbit, 165 metres. There we go, just got one just dropped in on the fence line now. Three meters. So let's put that in the app. So that's going to be fifteen eight three, so fifteen seven five. So you'll notice when I'm shooting, I use a rear bag a lot. These little bags, they're brilliant for um, just getting the rifle nice and steady. You can, once you've got your scope leveled, you can just squeeze that bag or release that bag to raise or lower the crosshairs. Um, and then by just maintaining that pressure, you can keep the uh, crosshairs dead steady on the target. So for the sake of probably 30 quid or whatever they are, they're a really good investment and these little scope levels as well are another good investment I think this one was about 30 quid online I think this one's from Sporting Services um, 
but that just allows you to know that your crosshair is, is perfectly upright. Um, if it's not perfectly upright or perfectly level, then it, uh, what can happen is when you, especially with a 2-2 with a very sort of pronounced trajectory on the, on the bullet, when it goes out, if it's not perfectly upright and it's canted over, it can fall off to one side. And um, you might not necessarily think that you generally can't the rifle, but the trouble is when you're shooting, especially if you've got ground like this where you've got a lot of hills and stuff, you can be on the side of a hill and you can feel like you're, you've got the rifle upright. But in actual fact, with a level on, you put the level on and you'd be quite surprised how far out sometimes you can be. Uh, sometimes it's just very hard when there's nothing actually upright in your uh, field of view to to actually sort of gauge it by then um, yeah you can be a long way off. Well as you can probably hear the wind's picked up quite a bit now and it's making shooting the 2-2 past a sort of couple hundred metres quite difficult so I'm going to uh, round it up for today but we've had a pigeon and a, and a rabbit so that was uh, that was good a good fun couple of hours out and I hope you enjoyed that so I'll pop out again this evening and have a look for a fox with a bigger rifle. This evening, as you can see, the weather's gorgeous and uh, I've got a fox that's coming into the pheasant pen killing pheasants. So, regardless of the weather, I'm going to have to just, uh, just deal with that and sit out and have a look and see if we can get the bugger. So, that's the, uh, that's the plan for tonight. Just one fox in the sights really. If I can get the one that's coming in doing the damage, then I'll be happy. And I'll also probably end up very wet, but there you go. Well, I've just come up to the farm now and it's still raining as you'd expect, but I'm not really too worried because I should be able to drive to the uh, to the spot I want to watch over the, uh, over the pen. Um, so yeah, I'll probably just uh, just sit in the truck and wait. Okay, right. This is a good spot to uh, to sit and wait. Got a good view over the wood here where the pen's situated. Uh, he's been losing birds on the end of this wood where the where the pen's actually situated. But foxes come in from all directions here. But um, at least here I've got a good view all around that wood with uh, the top of the wood being about 220 metres to the opposite corner here. So uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but not not too bad. I should be able to uh, just sit here, rest the rifle on the um, on the side of the side of the uh, truck, and hopefully get a shot if anything anything comes in. So we get the rifle ready and get comfy. this evening I've got the males around 12 with me it's 243 so uh, it's perfect for sort of stretching out a little bit of range I've got an element scope on there at the moment the HDLR usual sort of setup quick release sports match mount so what I can do is I can whip that off in the mo and I'll put the uh, I've got the infrared TH50 with me as well thermal scope so I'm putting that on it and uh, yeah it should just be ideal for this
Well, that worked really well. I've literally been here about 10 minutes and all of a sudden a fox appeared at the top right hand corner of that wood. He must have come up through the field behind, just on the edge there, and he uh, he just come up out the grass and I spotted him in the in the pulsar mergers here and ranged him. He was 220 metres, so that's around about 240 yards. And um, luckily the rifle zeroed at 200 metres, so I just went straight at him. And uh, yeah, it was a good good clean kill. We went straight down and I saw um, there was a there was a few bits and pieces come off from a few few working parts come out the back of him so um, he's not going anywhere he, he's down he's just dropped in the grass over there so I'm going to give it a little bit longer I'm not going to rush over there because it's still still work uh, well it's not even probably dark yet so I'm just going to buy my time a bit sit here let everything settle down and you never know might get another one as you can see there's quite a few uh, holes in that wood you can just see them all amongst the trees and that there, all uh, blowing brightly. There's a few hairs out there as well out on these fields which uh, keep catching me out because they're quite big and sometimes when they're sort of lumbering in or when they're just sat out there they can look quite foxy. It's surprising you can sit out in a vehicle and uh, foxes and well, pretty much any wildlife really don't take any notice of it. I suppose they used to see cars and trucks and stuff around and farm machinery and that. They probably bump into it every day of their lives, so generally it doesn't cause them any harm. So uh, I doubt they're particularly bothered. One of the most common questions I get asked about any thermal unit is usually um, how far can you ID something at with those, be it whatever model it is or whatever uh, brand it is I'm using. Um, in a nutshell, it's not always about what you can see, although a lot of the thermals these days get very sharp and out to probably around 200 yards, 300 yards perhaps, you can make out the tail of a fox, the general body shape of a fox and what have you. But um, sometimes, depending on the way something's standing, if it's still, it can be quite difficult to 100% ID what it is you're looking at. So a lot of identifying stuff is based on body movement as much as anything. And pretty much, on well certainly on ground like this, the only things that are out and about are going to be hares, rabbits, foxes and badgers. We don't have much else around here. There's no domestic cats and dogs and that around here for well, a long way. Uh, the only other thing that's about is sheep and cows and hopefully you should all recognise a sheep or a cow in the thermal even if you're not used to using thermal. So the, the two that you're probably going to get confused with um, possibly a badger and a fox. The big difference between a badger and a fox is a badger in the thermal has got more of an arch back, that's a dead giveaway. The way they move as well, uh, the way they, they kind of, uh, they're lower to the ground and they don't give off so much, um, or rather a, a badger gives off more heat than a fox. So as a rule of thumb, a badger tends to be a bit brighter than a fox. So I guess their coats are a little bit better insulated. The only other thing that you're going to spot that which you might think is a uh, is a fox is a hare. Very often they'll come in and they'll uh, or they'll, they'll come into a squeak sometimes, which is a bit confusing. You see that charging in, and you can quite easily think it's a fox. Um, also, they have a tendency to sort of sit down. Um, very much, they look kind of foxy when they just sat, and uh, they're a similar similar sort of size. Rabbits quite a bit smaller, so don't really confuse that. The only thing that can catch you out sometimes you get two rabbits sat together, it look quite big, can look like a fox. But um by and large you um foxes are quite they are quite distinctive really. You if you see something you're not sure if it's a fox, generally it's probably not a fox. It's uh usually when you see a fox, especially if it's moving, you're like that's a that's a fox. You recognise it straight away. Right, well it's finally uh, stopped raining and it's actually turned out to be a fairly pleasant evening now if it stays like this there's no wind or anything much to speak of um, 
I've not seen anything else around this pen. Sat over it now for about two and a half hours. Uh, so I'm going to cross my fingers and, and hope that that fox I shot was one that was coming in, taking the pheasants. It certainly came in confidently and quite early on, so it's a good chance that uh, it could be the one. But it all seems pretty quiet at the minute. I'm not seeing anything else around, so I think I'm going to have a little drive around the rest of the farm and um, just see if I'm bumping into anything out and about. There we go. So a fox, a dog fox. Nice. And that was just working its way to the pen, which is just in the wood, just here. You can probably hear on the uh, recording the um, the music. There's a radio that the farmer's left in the pen there, just to try and keep the um, the birds of prey and uh, foxes away from the pen. And I'm pretty sure this one wasn't coming in to listen to the uh, love hour. So I'm just going to have a little stand around in this valley here. There's a lot of rabbits on these banks all around me here. And uh, there's always a fox in this valley. So there's nothing here at the minute, but I'm just going to stay put, give it half hour. And... Uh, just see if anything turns up. Go on, hunting the bank up here. two down for the evening. Pretty happy with that. Let's go and pick that one up. Right, well, that's that fox. And that's, yeah, it's a vixen. I thought it probably was. There we go, straight out the chest. That was a pretty straightforward shot down, the, down from the valley there. Truck's parked at the bottom of the valley. It's about 100 and 10, I think it's about 112 metres, so about 120 yards. Well, that's two foxes down for the evening, but it was the first one I really wanted to get that one that was around the uh, the pheasant pen. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I got that one. That was a uh, dog fox in the end. And uh, they're a little bonus vixen in this valley as well. And again, this one I've been, I've seen this one around a few times, so I was, uh, I was quite pleased to get that one too. But um, yeah, so as always, Mounds are in 12 there doing the business. Um, and that TH50 V2 scar, I love using that. That's a great bit of kit. I just really, I've got a lot of faith in this, this setup. And uh, especially as well with the Sports Match quick release mounts, these mounts are brilliant. Be able to swap between the day scope and that thermal scope with no need to zero, re-zero it, just literally take one off, put it, put the other one on, um, I'll swap that in a matter of seconds and it's just bang on every time. So yeah, really pleased with that. Anyway, yeah, a good evening. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.